horde and soon to be horde. This is Mini Dom. I want this little opportunity so we can get to know each other a little bit more. There's something I like more than really anything in the world that not even Zombo knows about. And that's true crime dramas. I love to watch them. They're so real and raw and in your face. And I love that. It's just so delicious. I want to watch one with you guys. This one is supposed to be about cannibals, so it's perfect topic for both of us. September 2017. Breaking news. A cannibal couple has been arrested, and it is speculated that they are responsible for killing at least 30 people. More information soon, but for now, the details people. are gory, with the police releasing footage of decapitated human bodies and body parts. Who was this couple, and what's mm. the full story behind their dastardly actions? Normal beginnings and life crises. The best place to start is always the beginning. Dmitry Bakshiv was born on the 28th of January 1982, and had his early childhood at an orphanage in southern Russia. It was said that his birth parents were drunkards and could not afford to cater for him. So he I stayed see. under the care of the orphanage for three years before a married couple adopted him. For over a decade, he seemed to be living a pretty normal life and was said to grow up mm. a healthy young man. But like most stories of people who ventured into the dark side, something changed his life trajectory forever. His well, nobody ever is just normal. What, what is that kind of a thing? He was prone to be normal? Like... That's really presumptuous. His adoptive mother became terminally ill with cancer. After a long mm. battle, she passed away, leaving Dimitri at the mercy of his adoptive father, who changed drastically ah. and became violent after the death of his wife. Eventually, he was thrown out of the house and left to navigate life on his own. After several I months see. of putting up at the houses of well-meaning individuals who had initially tried to help him, but eventually get fed up and turn him away, he succumbed to homelessness. He decided that he would figure out his life on his own, and so his mm. venture into the world of crime began, but was quickly cut short after he robbed a store. In a frantic attempt to escape, he robbed a car, but the robbery was promptly reported, and Dimitri was chased down, arrested, and given a two-year prison sentence. This guy just has bad luck. He's just the worst kind of luck. He, like, he can't get away with anything. This marked the beginning of another phase of his life, the one where he was both lonely and alone. He had no friends or family to check up on him while he was in prison, and none to go to when he finished his prison term. But one thing he mm. needed more than people to hang out with was a means of livelihood so he could get a place to stay and food to eat. Shortly after leaving jail, he secured a job at a construction site and started to earn enough to get by. This did not make him less of a loner, as his co-workers stated that he often kept to himself and preferred to hang around in bars where he never drank and spent time with drunkards and drug addicts. For some reason, he seemed to enjoy their ah. presence, and love soon came came calling. Her name was Natalia. Born on the 25th of January 1975, she was about seven years older than him. They had one thing in common. She had lost her mother as a child. However, this did not affect her life as badly as it affected Dimitri. She Mystery does love company, that's for sure. She was catered for by family members and went ahead and received standard education. By 19, mm. she had decided to proceed to medical school, where she became a nurse and rose to the position of senior nurse at the sanitation department of Krasnodar. In the course of her career, mm. she was assigned to a military school, where she met a military officer who became her first husband. Not much is known about him and the relationship they shared, but they had a child together before he died. This devastating situation had her seeking solace in alcohol and drugs. It turned her oh. life upside down, and she was often out of jobs, looking ah. unkempt and living recklessly. Her favorite spot sense. for hanging out became the bar, where she would drink herself into a stupor. Dimitri and Natalia ah. became friends and started dating shortly after. Several months into their relationship, they decided it was time to move in together. It seemed like a convenient arrangement. They were both struggling to get by. Dimitri could mm. save on rent since Natalia was living in the military dormitory she had inherited from her husband after his ah. passing, things were going pretty well, and they decided to get married five years later. By now, you're probably hmm. wondering what happened to her son. Well, he'd been living with his mother kind and of. her newfound love until he decided to move out. Natalia's ah. drinking habit had only gotten worse, and with a boyfriend who had a penchant for being unkempt, the house was in a perpetual state of chaos. The son, whose identity is unknown and was scarcely mentioned in all the stories of this cannibal couple, decided that he needed to set out on his own. The newlywed That's couple my. moved to a new location to begin a new lease on life, but it turned out that they had walked hand in hand into the very throes of hell to perpetuate unmentionable horrors. A startling Ooh. discovery. On the 11th of September 2017, construction workers Can't were going see. about their day, and everything seemed pretty normal, until an unexpected turn of events brought them face to face with gory sights they had never before seen or expected to see in their life. I better see Somebody it. I want to see it. phone on the sidewalk and thought it rather unfortunate that someone had lost their phone, so they alerted ah. the other workers. However, no one at the site laid claim to it or had any idea of who could be the owner. So they decided to do a mini investigation for any clues on who to contact. There was no. That's really weird. 
It's a free phone. Why don't you take the free phone? These guys are just too wholesome. Oswald on the phone, they easily gained access and began to look through the images. It was then uh, that they found the disturbing images that had police sirens wailing a few days after. The pictures included so a selfie kinky. of an unknown man posing with a decapitated head of a female and sticking human fingers that had been cut off from the rest of the body into his mouth and nostrils. It was like a virtual horror show with more pictures of severed body parts and dead humans. At the Seems like just a waste. I mean, the fingers are usually the best part. They just stuck him into the head and buried it? <sighs> These cannibals are just not very smart. At this point, there was no need to call anyone except the police, which they did immediately. After just a few days, the police traced the phone's owners. Well, they were Dmitri and Natalia Bakshiv. But the discovery of the missing phone was just the beginning of the horrors the police would discover. On arriving at their home, it was indeed a hellhole, with a trail of death visible throughout the residence. During the police raid, Not they found pictures of dead bodies it. in different horrifying states, some of them including the couple taking up disturbing poses with the bodies. In the fridge, there were oh. also human parts in jars, pieces of wow. human skin, and frozen body parts. It became glaringly obvious that this couple were not only murderers, but also cannibals who had been at it for years. Wow, wow. So, of course you would freeze the body parts and make them last longer, but... Man, that's so irresponsible. Not even taking care of your meat that you purchased. I mean, not even taking care of the meat that you done worked for, you slaughtered for, and you put it in there. That's a shame. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. We'll get into the details of their crimes and how it all played out in the next chapter. In addition to these despicable discoveries, there was a handwritten recipe book on how to prepare Ooh. different human parts. It appeared to have been written by the wife, Natalia, and videotaped tutorials on taking a body apart and carving out specific types of meat and fat from the body were also found. If you need to take a break to catch your breath, now would be the best time to do. In this list, they have like different things like almonds and other things that kind of freshen stuff up. up. I see. They kind of mix some stuff together to kind of give a little more flair and pizzazz. I think it's unnecessary, but you know, they're humans. So that's what they gotta do. So, because there's much more. Natural human ah. hair taken from a dead female body was also present at the scene. But it was a shocking mm. photo that left a confusing clue. A decapitated Ooh. head set up as a Christmas dinner on a silver platter and decorated with oranges all around it. It had Fancy. an inscription showing the date, December 1999. That would make it 18 mm. years old. Could it be? Could it be that the cannibal couple had been prowling around and cutting up victims for nearly two decades? Their gory Very crimes. Possible. Their strategy was to search out vulnerable people people battling oh. substance abuse and other forms of addiction via dating sites or other obscure places where they felt like crimes would go unnoticed. They would then lure them to a secluded place or their home with a promise of surplus alcohol and drug them with a tranquilizer called Corvalol, which would make huh. it easy to attack and murder them. The evidence in their homes reflected such tremendous skill in dismembering and storing dead human bodies that it made one wonder where they had gone at such expertise. When Dimitri was mm. arrested and interrogated, he maintained that he was innocent. This baffled the police, especially since there were pictures of him posing with the body parts. At first, he claimed that he had found them in a bush and decided to take pictures with them. The stories did not add up. And after more questioning, ah. he eventually confessed to killing a 35-year-old woman, Elena Vashrusheva. She was a no waitress shame. at a bar and lived close to the but couple, but it. it is unclear what relationship they shared and how deeply acquainted they were with one another. What is clear, however, mm. is that the Bakshiv couple murdered and dismembered her, then went ahead to cook and eat her remains while also disposing of some other body parts in the surrounding bushes. During investigations, it was reported that the trio was hanging out in an abandoned block of flats and downing bottles of alcohol when an intense argument broke out. Natalia reportedly began to accuse Elena of trying to seduce her husband, and the two began to exchange words until Natalia ah. asked her husband Dimitri to kill her supposed rival. He attacked her immediately, mm. stabbing her violently Drama. and repeatedly until she died. The wife was said to have also participated in the killing, and they both began to take the well, body apart sense. piece by piece. The cannibal duo then packed the pieces, with the husband placing them in his backpack as they headed for their apartment. During the raid on the house by the police, body parts believed to be Elena's were found in their freezer and even mm. in a pan on the cooker. This is where it gets even more riveting. A report Ooh. by a retired Air Force communications officer, Sergei Labintsev, who happened to be acquainted with a couple, suggests that the accusations of seduction were simply a ploy and their main intent was to murder. Labintsev ah. mentioned that their arrest brought back a memory that made him tremble as he now came face to face with the fact that they could have killed and eaten him too. Less than
than two months before their arrest, they were at his home when Dimitri suddenly had a violent outburst and said he was jealous of the retired officer's relationship with his wife. Labintsev was confused as the accusation was baseless and out of place, but he had put his military training to good use when Dimitri swung at him with a stool and almost hit him from behind. After dodging oh, the attack, no. Natalia jumped on him too, trying to cause him harm. But he managed to throw the two of them out of his house and called a taxi to take them away from the premises. He never saw them again until the news of their arrest and sinister Ooh. crimes began to make the rounds. Sergei Labintsev escaped, but not many were as lucky. It is believed that aside from Elena, ah. they had killed several dozen others. The building where Elena was killed was dubbed their killing crypt. It was an abandoned block of flats intended for military housing, but was never completed. And it was in this place that they carried that out sense. several murders. Several body parts had been found in the building, including a hand, earlier that year during the spring season. Yet no one raised the alarm. You're probably already horrified, but the story gets even- Not really. It's more interesting than anything. Like he always assumes that we're just scared and horrified that they went into this abandoned building and just started just going at it at people. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the building is unoccupied. You're going to do whatever the hell you want. So, I mean, you want to eat your own kind. It's a perfect place just to sit and hide. Like, I'm not even scared. Like, I just want to know more, bro. Even more twisted. And you need to hear this. Natalia and her husband lived in a hostel at a military academy in a southern Russian town called Krasnodar. Natalia baked mm. and sold meat pies to people in the academy, including student pilots Very and other trainees. Life. She even went ahead to supply some local eateries. It was quite unsettling. But after the arrest, it was rumored and suspected that she had been using human meat for her baked goods all along. Further investigation ah, and yeah. interviewing of the people who lived and worked close to the couple revealed that the former nurse turned murderer and cannibal had also approached restaurant and cafe owners with the offer of supplying meat to them and even searching for a job as a chef. She seemed to be looking for a viable market to sell human uh. meat. The husband uh -huh. was always looking shabbily dressed and smelly while his wife was a chronic drunkard who frequently had fits of rage but they never mm. imagined that they were hiding such a dark secret. The signs were there. Couple. One shopkeeper recalled seeing blood dripping from Dimitri's backpack as he went out of the store after topping up his phone. Natalia confessed that she and her husband had committed these horrific crimes for several years and killed as many as 30 victims. Yeah, they're not even hiding it. They don't even care. They're just gonna do what they do and they're just gonna just... They're just living life. There's living life eating people. Yet, this claim was never ascertained. However, it would seem that there is, in fact, some truth to it, because jars of pickled mm. human flesh, cans of steamed human meat, and at least 19 mm. slices of skin were found in the home. They seem- I mean, for people wasting all these different body parts, they're really trying to preserve a lot of it. I think they're just really picky about what they want to eat even to have pictures with all of their victims, as Natalia wow. identified some of them using the photographs found in their homes. Several mobile phones belonging to different people suspected to be victims of their cannibalism were also found littered around the apartment. Fortunately, I their see. nemesis caught up with them, and it was time to face the law. Facing the law. Dimitri and ah. Natalia, who were 35 and 42 respectively at that time, were arrested and remanded in police custody. At the same time, investigations were being carried out into the evidence found and their okay. shocking confessions. A psychologist was introduced to the interrogation process to get information from the couple. However, their mm. claim of killing 30 men and women could not be confirmed by the police, who said that they only had enough evidence pointing to the death of two women. Questions were raised about the mental capabilities mm. of Natalia, who had made most of the confessions, and after analysis by a psychiatrist, she was declared mentally healthy. Yet, she tried to twist the narrative for favor of herself, claiming that she was mentally ill and had previously checked herself into mental institution after the death of her first husband. The records were searched out, and her claims turned out to be true. She had indeed ah. visited several psychiatric hospitals claiming that she had a mental anomaly and asking to be checked in. However, the records also mm. show that she had been certifiably mentally fit at each of these clinics and discharged. In February of 2019, almost two years after they were initially arrested, Natalia was uh. found guilty of incitement to commit murder and given a 10-year yeah. sentence in a penal colony and 18 months in jail. She sought an appeal for the sentence, but the judgment was upheld, and she is still serving a sentence to date. On the other hand, Dimitri was sentenced to 12 years and two months to be served in a maximum security prison. However, it appears that the weight of the law was too heavy for Dimitri, who succumbed to death in 2020, barely one year into his sentence. He was said to have developed type 1 diabetes in prison, which remained untreated, but based on the precedent laid out in the trial, some people believe that foul play might have been involved. His death has left a huge hole in the unresolved puzzle of what exactly happened. The number of victims who had their lives snuffed out by the cannibal couple and their identities, but Natalia remains in jail, serving her sentence, and perhaps in the years to come, more light will be shed on the surprisingly murky story. The crime is 
is puzzling, same. but even more troubling is how it seemed to have been handled so shoddily. Surprisingly, the couple was not yeah. charged with any cannibal crimes. During investigations, despite all the different pictures of decapitated bodies and fragments of frozen body parts sent to laboratories for examination, Vadim Bugainko, the head of the investigation department of the Russian Democratic mm. Republic for the Krasnodar Krai, revealed that all the remains were of one person. At this time, the city was already huh. agog with the news of the cannibal couple, and people with missing loved ones feared the worst, that the people they were searching for had been eaten by the sinister killers. Several rumors That's shrouded enough. this case, but the committee set up to investigate the matter insisted that there was only one murder. There were claims that the military academy where they had lived did everything possible to avoid being dragged into the case, as it could affect mm. the institution's reputation. Many are of ah. the opinion that this should have been a reason to take up the case and handle it as thoroughly as possible. They also believe that their sentence was mild in comparison mm. to their atrocious crimes. What do you think? But yeah, there was like, there was very little evidence really there, even though they were very careless and they didn't really care if they got caught or anything. It's like, they just really just did what they did and they just ate them. So it's possible all those could be eaten or they could have just scattered them everywhere else and just the incompetence of the plea, who knows? I mean, it's, this is such a mystery hoard. I don't even understand half of it really of how they got away with so much of it. Though I do agree that cannibalism really just should be a thing. You know, because I love eating flesh so much, you know, it shouldn't really be a bad thing, personally. But what did you guys think of that episode? Like, I really thought it was interesting. Real life stuff of just missing evidence and trying to find people. Man, and just getting over all that and just being circled around that kind of fear every day? I mean... For somebody who just eats flesh on a regular, like, I don't really even think of stuff like that. But, you know, these help my brain grow, as Zamba would always say. So, alright, well, thanks for watching with me. I hope to watch more with you. Love you. Bye.